voicemail from Carrie. Now, there were two parts to this voicemail. Both of them were ghost stories, but the second one cut off. So Carrie, if you are listening, please call back and tell us the second part of the ghost story because it cut off and it didn't finish. I think Google Voice has a three minute limit. So if your story is longer than three minutes, record a voice memo and email it to me because we want to hear the other story. But Amanda, are you ready for the first story? Yes. Okay, this is, this is creepy. I love how we just have ghost stories all year round. <laughs> all right, I'm going to load the file. Hang on. Okay, here we go. Hi, Sarah. My name's Carrie, and I just listened to the amazing episode with you and Amanda, and I have some ghost stories to share. I've, I've had multiple encounters, but here is the one that freaks me out the most. My mom and I were staying at this little hotel in Virginia City, Nevada, which is known for being a ghost town. It was a little hotel right outside of town, and it had antique furniture in it. And in the middle of the night, I suddenly, it was really bright, so it woke me up, and I thought my mom had turned on a lamp, and I was, like, about to ask her, you know, what she was doing turning on a light. And she, um, she it was a king-size bed. She patted my knee, and she said, it's okay. And I looked away from her to see this top half of a woman that I could see through who was dressed in this old time period clothing. And she was shaking her finger at us like she was scolding us for something. And then she disappeared. I could not move. I was freaking out. And um, needless to say, the rest of the night, we did sleep with that lamp on. We did not turn that on, though. <laughs> so it was really, it was really creepy. And I cannot explain it. I tried to, you know, I tried to look around to see, maybe, you know, I'm thinking, well, there's a projector in the room or something, but I, I cannot explain it. Oh, my God, right? I have goosebumps <laughs> on my arm. <laughs> So the light turns on. They didn't turn on the light. No. And her mom's like, it's okay. And there's half of a see-through woman scolding them. So I'm assuming the mom saw it first and was like, okay. it's okay. Just relax. And was like patting the daughter's knee as if she'll be like, don't freak out. But there's a half of a ghost woman in our bedroom right now. As you do. Yeah, of course. Can you believe that? That's wild. That's wild. I want to yes. talk to Carrie and her mom, if possible, because that means both of them would have seen this, right? Yeah. They I both... feel like a lot of ghost stories are like, this happened to me and I was alone, right? Right. Yeah. Like, that's why every time Adam says, oh, I don't believe in ghosts. I'm like, you heard a ghost and I was there. You cannot. You heard a ghost yeah. and I was I... there. I feel like this is also one of the few ones too. like my ghost story was like something moving, but this was like, I saw a like person. half of a spectral person. And they turned the light up. on. Yeah. That reminds me of the ghost that I encountered at the in Boonesboro who messed with my phone to wake me up. I want to know what she was scolding them for. What were they doing? I mean, it's a mom and daughter in the same bed. Calm down. Yeah. Or maybe like, Maybe they're supposed to get up early. Or maybe it was like that person's bedroom and they're like, what are you doing in my bedroom? Get out of my bed. Interesting. Yeah, hell? maybe she wanted maybe she wanted them to scoot over so she could get in. <laughs> you humans look warm. It's cold. Yeah, here. Just snuggle in. Be be the meat in that sandwich. So I am amazed by how many ghost stories are in like Nevada and, and California, like there, what is going on in the, when the West and the Southwest? Well, maybe like the gold rush, there were a lot of people out there and I'm sure a lot of people died, oh, yeah. um, Yep. you know, on their way out there or while working out there. Yep. Which is super, super likely to spawn some bedroom scoldy ghosts, yeah. right? I also wonder too, like, I feel, I think we talked about this in the previous, in the maybe not the previous one with the library ghosts, but I mm -hmm. feel like we've had this conversation of like, where are the modern ghosts? They're all in like old Victorian garb or whatever. Or like oh my God. An old prospector's thing. Where it's just like, you know, a ghost from the 80s. Okay, you know what we're going to get now? We're going to get ghosts wearing like, you remember the Juicy Couture tracksuits where the, the rise, boots. right, where, with, with Ugg boots, 
and the pants were like 19 miles too long, yeah, but the yeah. but the crotch would barely cover like any of the area in in your in your nether region. Like you I needed wanna, to. I want that. You want to you want a low rise juicy couture ghost. I want to see a ghost <laughs> for a time period that I recognize. Wow, that guy's from the early 90s. Check out that mullet. <laughs> yeah. And you, if it was like me in the 80s and the early 90s. I want the big hair. I was just going to say hair. crunchy double barrel bangs. Like you would put your bangs up on the curling iron and then spray till it sizzled. That's what you're going to get. A double barrel crunchy hair, crunchy hair perm ghost. You're like, is that its aura? No, it's just its teased hair. It's just its hair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh my God, that would be so funny. So if any if anyone has a ghost story of like a mo- like a modern looking ghost from like the last 20 or 30 years. The ghost appeared in my bedroom and I could see the new kids on the block patch on his <laughs> ghostly <laughs> denim jacket. And he scolded me. My ghost me. still... My ghost must have died in their kiss makeup, like <laughs> something like that. <laughs> well, see, then you're kind of blurring, like, is it a ghost or is it an actual like haunting by a demon? Because if it's true. semi-transparent, how are you going to know it's makeup? Maybe, maybe that's yeah. just what the guy looks like, you know? <laughs> now I'm picturing like 80s ghosts, early 90s ghosts, like grunge ghosts. At least if you, at least if you are a grunge ghost, you're going to be comfortable, right? Yeah. So I also have a reader letter and I will okay. share it with you to read. This is from Isabel. Thank See? you for writing to us, Isabel. I love getting email. And also thank you, Isabel, for giving us permission to read your letter in an episode. Hey, it is loading. I accidentally clicked on Discord by mistake. So that's opening. <laughs> Discord is a... Not now, Discord. Beefy load too. I know. <laughs> like takes forever and like spins around and makes a lot of noise and also sarah can we not say the words beefy load ever again (laughs) i mean i guess it's a chunky load it's a big chunky load (laughs) okay this is from isabel Sarah and Amanda, let me start by saying when Sarah said you sunk my battleship, I laughed so hard. I startled and think offended a neighbor who was jogging past me. (laughs) I'm not sure if she believed me or not that I was laughing at the podcast. My hat was covering my earbuds. Oops. I've done that. (laughs) I was listening to the end of this audiobook that I have been waiting for. It finally came in on hold and I was listening to the end of it um, while I was cleaning up the dining room yesterday. And I was so shocked by something that happened in the story that I went, oh my God. And Adam came running in like, what's wrong? I'm like, oh, nothing. I just figured out who the murderer is. It's fine. <laughs> so, whether you're gasping or laughing, I have done that while walking and listening and, and alerted people as well. Yep. Been there. I've, d- I've listened to a lot of like comedy podcasts. So it's always like how to not laugh hysterically in public. Yep. All right, back to Isabel's letter. And, she says, and yes, with three exclamation marks, the whole best friend can't date his sister. It's always bugged the shit out of me. Like, why are you friends with a guy you wouldn't trust to be with your sister? That was a very good point. Absolutely. 100% <laughs> for what agree. It, for what it's worth, I happen to have married a close friend's brother. Aww. 30 years married this coming summer. Met my mister when I was 19. Yikes. <laughs> Don't do it. Though. that's so lovely it's not a yikes though i met adam when we yeah. were wait some high school age right yeah, we were 17 and got together when we were 19 and have been together ever since so yeah that's that's i mean i understand it's like yeah it's embarrassing i'm a i'm a i'm a cringe ya novel but no you're fine yeah for some people like i don't know the whole ya like it's not realistic to meet someone when you're in high school and marry them like yep Maybe most of the time it's not, but it does happen. Yep. I always look look at those assertions and I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. It happens. There are two people who ended up married. There are two couples that ended up married in my senior year. The other couple is still married. Also, the <laughs> woman is also named Sarah. Maybe it's just a Sarah thing. I don't know. <laughs> Isabel says, okay, now you asked for us to challenge you and share our favorites. Yes. 
So my favorites, and I also don't think they were mentioned. I listened to the episode twice. Holy Look, crap. We, tr- we trust you more than we trust ourselves oh, at this point. Me, <laughs> don't even ask me what, what I'm, this is like, I've done 500 plus episodes. I don't remember what I said in one, but I trust you. And also thank you for listening twice. That's really cool. Um, so the two tropes mentioned are one bed left at the hotel. That's a good one. Um, and snowed in at a cabin. I love snowed in. That's my favorite I, trope. I want to be snowed in at a nice cabin so badly. Not my apartment, but like a nice cabin of like, oh no, we have to stop here and can't leave here for three days and have to stay warm with a, lots of blankets and yes. a nice fire. Because the trick is if you're snowed in in your home, you're I mean, you're fine, you're safe. Hopefully you have food and heat, but you're also snowed in with all your chores. Yeah. Like all your house stuff is still there, right? But if you're snowed in somewhere else, you have no choice but to chill out and do whatever you want to do that isn't chores because your chores aren't there. Being snowed in and trapped with your chores sounds like a Chuck Tingle novel. (laughs) Snowed in by my sentient sexy chores. (laughs) (laughs) Chuck, if you're listening. You can have that one for free. It's a freebie not that, from us to you, Chuck. From not us that to there's you. a limit to your imagination. But you know, that is still, Chuck Tingle is still <laughs> the most popular episode that I've done. I think it's because Chuck has created this sort of like anonymity around themselves. Yeah. And people want to know more. And as as prolific as Chuck is, people still don't know who it is. Which is wild. It's, it's, it's just, great. It's I, I mean, never want to know. No, like, I don't. Please preserve that. For I me. do not want to believe that that Chuck Tingle is a ordinary human. I prefer to think of them as like a this otherworldly, yes, an otherworldly being of impossible being. creativity. Yeah, I'm also very excited about Chuck's traditionally published book coming out. I think from Tor. Chuck has a book deal with Tor. Oh, that's right. It's a horror yeah. novel, isn't it? Yeah, it's a gay horror novel. Pounded in the butt by my <laughs> swamp creature. It's called Camp Damascus. That's right. Um, yes. It, yeah. cover, it comes out in the summer in July um, in mm. Tor's Nightfire horror line. That's so It's got so a cool. pretty pretty cool cover like the mountains are actually a mouth and out of that mouth are coming bugs oh yeah okay well i not for everyone (laughs) i think chuck having a print deal is pretty great yeah very very pumped about it um okay back to isabel's letter um isabel says super tired of no i fiercely hate the Neanderthal, she's mine thought process. Ooh, yeah. AKA yeah. beyond possessive to an unhealthy level. Does this count with the cliche bit? I just hate that guys would think they own a woman or man. Let's say human. Yeah, that she's mine. Like, ew, gross. Yeah. It, it's demoralizing and, 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 de- and dehumanizing. Like that's a person, not a possession. Yeah. Um, and then Isabel says, fessing up to say, I may have done this in my first series, but I honestly don't remember. And I'm fixing to rewrite those six books and adding a seventh in 2023, but we'll be removing that shit if I see it. Fans of the series be damned. Um, if it's there, it's because it was in everything I'd been reading at the time. It's seriously become a sandpaper phrase for me in the past several years. Mm. I feel like, uh, oh, and Isabel signs off anyway. Love all your episodes. Keep them coming. Thank you, Isabel. I, I remember, and we've talked about this. I remember a time of like the early to mid 2000s. Yeah. And all like a paranormal romance boom. I feel like it was all, or a lot of that. There was a, a lot, lot of, of she's mine. And that was also part of the um, the, the BDSM craze around Fifty Shades because Fifty Shades has a lot yeah. of she's, but this is mine. This belongs to me. There's a there's yeah. an English comedian and I'm his name just flew out of my head. I'll put it in the show notes who does a whole thing about reading 
lines from Fifty Shades in different English accents, like different regional dialects, because there was some survey that said the English accent is the sexiest accent. So he reads Fifty Shades in Scouse, and it's hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't like the she's mine, this is mine, you belong to me. Like, okay, no. Mm -mm, not interested. And it's interesting because I was thinking, I am really not into books where one of the characters is deeply emotionally immature. It's often the hero, but it, there's the, you have caused me to have a feeling and I will punish you. Or one person hurt my feelings. So I blame all of all of you for this. Yeah. There's a, a certain lack of emotional nuance and emotional fluency that I just, I am i don't want to read someone learning how not to be an immature, emotional turd bucket to other people. Like that's not the journey that I want to read in a romance. Yeah. And I think the, you know, she's mine is part of that. Like, no, that's not, no. I mean, unless you're play acting or role playing, I mean, like, yeah, that's a different thing. No, that's, that's not my thing. I do love the phrase sandpaper phrase. Sandpaper phrase. Yeah. That's just like really good. I like great that. Great song. Yeah. I know exactly what that, like I, the minute Isabel, I read that, I was like, oh, yep. Mm -hmm, yep. Nope. That's a big hard no. Love it. So I have to tell you, I started a book today. Yes. And on the first page, it's, it's first person. I'm not sure if it's first person present or first person past. I have to, I, I really struggle with first person present sometimes. Um, but they start off by going off about Nancy Drew and Ned Nickerson was so boring. And, oh, Ned was awful. And then the better hero was Jim Frayne, was, who was so much hotter. And, and the first page, I highlighted it. He was a prototype Nora Roberts hero, well-mannered, <laughs> financially secure, comfortable in a tux, still able to fix things around the house. I feel like Nancy should have gone off with her best friend. I for like. Her enabling agree. best friend that's like, you should do this crazy thing. I can't remember her name for the life of me now. But. Oh, now I have to look it up because it's actually going to bother me. Right Nancy now, Drew, best friend. Nancy, Nancy Drew, best friend. Um, right now, people are screaming George. at the podcast. George. George Georgia George. George Fain. Yeah, that wasn't coded at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. and she should have ran off with George. So this book, by the way, that I just started is The Unkindness of Ravens by M.E. Hilliard. And it is a mystery about a librarian who keeps stumbling over dead bodies. And I thought, well, I'll give that a try because I do like literary references in my book. What are you reading this week? I see. I just got a copy of, don't remember, um, the full title because it's like one of those fantasy titles. Um, um, a blank of thing and stuff with other stuff. The Chronicles. Yes. Yeah. Yes. A blank I of just, thing and stuff. Y'all can have that title. It's a freebie. A blank of I thing just, and stuff. I, it's literally out in my kitchen right now. <laughs> my friend got an arc for me, but she also refurbished a walk for me. Um, Wait, your friend refurbished a walk? Yeah, we call it a trash. My friend Audrey, love her. Um, like is very resourceful and someone was throwing out a walk and so while she went for a walk she found this walk um in in like someone's giving away pile grabbed it uh refurbished it seasoned it all this stuff for me and i'm giving it to my partner for christmas along with um p Kenji Alt Lopez's The Art of the Walk. The Art of the Walk. A Adam and I were just talking um, about Kenji yesterday that his cookbooks, his recipes are so great. Yeah, The Art of the Walk with some additional like uh, walk utensils because um, my partner cooks a lot of like Asian food, a lot of ramen, a lot of fried rice. They really mm -hmm. like that kind of flavor combination. And I feel like getting something that lets them cook in a, you know, type of cuisine that they're familiar with, but allows them to learn something new. That's very cool. Um, yeah, so that it's in a bag with my walk in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, but the book is Claire Legrand's, um, I just saw it. 
uh, Claire Legrand's A Crown of Ivy and Glass. It is a thing of stuff and stuff. Yeah, I told you. That's why I could not remember. It's like, it's like a something of something and something. A blank of something and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's got this really pretty like hunter green cover with like a a crown with like leaves and stuff all over it. Um, I'm eyeing that one next. I've been picking up and putting down a lot just because it's the holiday season. I've got so much fucking stuff to do all the time. You know, I had to come to terms with the fact that I probably will not finish Brian's cross stitch in time for Christmas. I thought I was close. Yeah. And then I went and counted all of the little plants I still had left to do. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh, I'm just halfway done. Oh, shit. When, When is their birthday? Their birthday's in June. Um, our our anniversary is in March. So you've got some um, additional targets. Yeah, and they're super sweet. They're like, it is totally okay if you don't finish it in time. And of course, me being the way I am, I was like, no, I want to give you something special as if the things that I bought with my own money aren't special. Because uh, I gave them a handmade gift for their birthday, which was the Mononoke terrarium. Um, so I feel like I've come to terms, not trusting. Like I was going to work on it like eight hours today. That seems. And then I'm like, all right, you got to let that dream die. Amanda. <laughs> it's not happening. Yeah. You got to let it go. So... I, don't know. I think the walk and everything sounds like such a great gift. You don't have to put additional pressure on yourself. Yeah, I know. Um, but just give them, just, you just know give them for a book. decade. Give them a book, a blank of thing and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> blank of thing and stuff. Yeah, blank so yeah, of things and stuff. They're getting this big walk book and a walk. They've gotten another gift that is for adults only, so we'll not be sharing. Oh, <laughs> really? An adults only gift, so they've gotten that. It's I won't reveal what it is, but there's a running joke with Brian. Um, his mom has given him a lot of monogrammed stuff. Like he has monogrammed towels and Brian also has a monogrammed, like his AirPods case is monogrammed and his Apple pencil is monogrammed. Okay, I love everything about this. So the adult item that I had made, I also asked them if they could monogram it. That's hilarious. If you need to make a home, if you need to make a homemade gift between now and Christmas, (laughs) just cross stitch his monogram (laughs) and then like sew the edge of the Aida so it doesn't unravel and cut it out and then you could put it in a tiny frame you could just leave it you could just get some (laughs) double-sided tape and stick it on random things like just little just randomly monogram like like velcro on the back of it so you can just move it wherever yeah (laughs) Yeah. or put like a a magnet on it you can like monogram the milk monogram his breakfast (laughs) put a put it on a banana just like cross stitch him his monogram and then or do multiples and just keep leaving them places do you want to see do you want to see what i got for adam yeah okay hang on i'll grab it so my sound curtains make a perfect hiding space because they hang away from the wall so I can hide boxes behind them. <laughs> so for Adam, so I told you about advent calendars, right? And Hanukkah? Yes. 24 yes, yes. divided yeah. by eight. So yeah. last year I got him, excuse it was like me. a whiskey one, right? Yeah. Last year I got him a bourbon, bourbon. advent calendar. This year I got him the Japanese whiskey advent calendar. Oh, it's Suntory time. That's right. It is Suntory time. So there's lots and lots of little bottles of different Japanese whiskeys. And some of them sound really, really cool. But there's 24 of them. And there is no Christmas Michigas. There's nothing Christmassy on the yeah, box. Yeah, it's just like a very lovely, like, red box with, like, a decorative, like, yeah, Japanese. It- these Adam. patterns are almost, they remind me of the Alhambra. They're almost, they look like, like Moroccan tiles, really. I will hit stop. Wait, actually, hang on. I'm going to tell you a joke and I need to know if, if this okay. is, if this is way too out of, is this joke <laughs> just not. You started it and stopped like six times. <laughs> All right, okay. All right, this is a bit, this joke's a bit off color. So I don't know yeah. if this fits the whole podcast. This will just be a Patreon yeah. exclusive. Yeah. 
This is, all right. What did the lesbian pirate with two peg legs say to her girlfriend? I don't know. What did the lesbian pirate with two peg legs say to her girlfriend? Scissor me timbers. (laughs) This is so bad. Yeah, so that's a special bonus joke for the for the Patreon community. Oh boy, exclusive to Patreon. Exclusive joke for y'all. Have a have a lovely rest of your day. 